Yeah, I came here about three years ago. My name is Dmitro. I'm from Kharkiv, Ukraine. My name is Konstantin Kozeris. I'm 23 years old. I've been living in Seoul for two years. In Ukraine, my hometown is Uman. It's a little ancient town in the center of Ukraine. Uh, hi, my name is uh, Valeria. I'm from Crimea in Ukraine. Here in Korea, I already almost five years and now I'm a PhD student researcher. Yes. Hi, my name is Olga Shastakova uh, and I'm from Lviv, Ukraine. It's uh, one of the biggest city in, cities in Western Ukraine. We've been in a condition of war with Russia for eight years. They were killing our people for eight years in, after they annexed our Crimean Peninsula in 2014. Putin, uh, he didn't officially make a statement that we are in a condition of war. He was just supporting the Donetsk and Luhansk, Luhansk region with soldiers and with weapons. On 24th of February, he started the full-scale invasion and I was really shocked. I just checked the news. That was in Korean time, that was during lunchtime. And in Ukraine, and it was around 4.30 uh, in the morning. So I saw that the first rockets were uh, like bombing Kyiv. Then I directly called my mom and I, I told her like just collect some documents, clothes and money. My mom first, when she picked up the phone, she could not realize. She said like, oh, maybe some mistake or something. But then after one hour, I received a call from my 13 years old sister. She was screaming and crying because of the sound of rockets outside of the window. So the first day I was really scared. People were like extremely on panic. And my father, he joined the local defense group of our hometown. So you must be so worried about them. Yeah, actually, maybe first week, I could not sleep more than like two hours per day. Many of my friends in Ukraine, they're not safe. Some even cannot go there to the underground because it's already full just in the house, hoping that it's going to be okay. When you wake up in the morning in Korea, cause, uh, because of the time difference and you see the message like, oh my God, I, I'm not sure if we're going to survive today or, oh, I, I just want to live. Like, I don't need anything else right now, so. Bombing the whole territory, killing people, innocent civilians, children, grand, uh, grandmothers, our hospitals are ruined. Russian people are also responsible for that crime because the President Putin, uh, he is controlling the country more than 20 year, 23 years. Russia is a democratic country, right? They have democratic elections, so he is the choice of Russian nation. People in Russia, they do not worry about human life. They worry about IKEA closure. They worry about Spotify is not working or new Apple iPhone is not going to be on the market, you know. They do not value human life. All Russians are responsible because they support their government. They are not taking actions. You can see the, there are some protests nowadays in Moscow and other cities, right? But we can see only a few thousands of people on this protest, but the population is 150 million. I don't feel that they, rea they even realize what is going on. Because on their television, they are showing that they are cleaning their world from Ukrainians because they think that we are like Nazi. We were just thinking to ourselves, well, um, Putin is a little bit crazy. Uh, but obviously, people in Russia wouldn't believe all those nonsense that they show on TV. But now, looking how on SNS, like on, on Facebook, people actually support killing Ukrainians, we realized that probably one of the biggest weapons Russia has ever turned on us was their lie. Russia should be isolated and from everywhere, like from science, from sport, from econo global economy, from business. Because when countries are doing business with Russia, they are supporting directly their army forces. Ukrainian army is very, very small in comparison to Russian army. 
So no matter how brave we are, in addition to sanctions, of course, Ukraine right now needs military support. Koreans already doing a lot for uh, Ukraine, and I see all this support here, immediate support. So I'm very proud to be Korean descendant, and Ukrainians like standing strong right now and showing the exceptional courage to the whole world. And I just hope that the whole world, and Korea is a part of this world, will show the same courage uh, in fighting aggressor and helping Ukraine. I even saw one, sold, one YouTuber from Korea, he also joined the military, and I saw their videos, they are, they are saying that they cannot just sit at home when they see that children, innocent children are dying. I'm very thankful to all the countries and all the people who support sanctions and just I hope they remember that we will not never forget it. We'll be truly thankful for for the rest of our lives. So their parents will tell them that one day our country did a terrible crime to our neighbor. We killed lots of children, lots of civilians, we just destroyed their cities. That's why nowadays we are paying the price for that and in future we should not repeat something like that.